Greetings, dear people of God at Trinity and beloved friends beyond. Thank you for joining me for this week's Reflections from the Other Side. My second round of immunotherapy was yesterday. It hit me with an unexpected wave of fatigue and nausea, so I went to bed to sleep rather than to my computer to offer a reflection for you. The good news about the delay is that now I can celebrate with you the not unexpected but nonetheless triumphant confirmation of Justice Ketanji Brown Jackson to the Supreme Court of the United States. I have only to return to that viral photo of the proud gaze of her daughter during the hearings to imagine the impact that this confirmation is having on the hopes and dreams of young black girls everywhere. My dreams have gotten so much bigger in almost an instant, said a 16-year-old Samaya Williams from school this morning. The hope, the light that this confirmation brings into the long, dark history of slavery and racism in our nation can inspire us all, in the words of Shirley Chisholm, to bring a folding chair when they don't give you a seat at the table. Oh, how women, especially women of color, have been ignored, vilified, and crushed in history. But as Maya Angelou wrote, you may try to write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may trod me down in the very dirt, but still, like dust, I rise. Still wounded, mortal as I am, I rise. We rise. Jennifer, a 2016 Thistle Farms graduate, recently posted a quote accompanied by these words, always on the mend, hashtag persistent. It reminded me of the wounded healer I talked about in my last reflection. I told you I couldn't get that image out of my mind and I would talk about it more. And the moon said to me, my darling daughter, you do not have to be whole in order to shine. That first night in her new apartment, Jennifer sat down to a meal of pancakes and sausage. She prepared a combination of breakfast and dinner, brinner, she calls it, in her home at her table in her kitchen. The night I ate those pancakes, says Jennifer, was when I knew I would be okay. Her traumatic and abusive childhood steeled Jennifer to defiant behavior, illegal drugs, and a life on the streets. From the age of 13, she and her lifestyle created the perfect target for human traffickers, pedophiles, and pornographers. For 20 years, she was stuck in a cycle she couldn't break. I couldn't find a real job with my type of history, she says. Employers don't want to hire criminals or drug addicts or streetwalkers. At 45, she confessed her life to a priest who forgave her and then told her about Thistle Farms. Her brother drove her to Nashville and the beginning of a new life at Thistle Farms. In case you don't know about it, operating on the philosophy of love heals, Thistle Farms provides two years of housing, food, therapy, education, and medical care to women as they recover from prostitution, addiction, and trafficking. It also offers jobs with a living wage to the healing women. Jennifer was employed as the volunteer coordinator. We are good women, but we need a first chance at life. We didn't get one as children, continues Jennifer. Thistle Farms did not pr produce a spontaneous, miraculous transformation in Jennifer, and she didn't feel safe for a long time, but she did feel loved and cared for, and she learned to care about and love herself Women are frightened when they first arrive, with holly, hollow, empty, empty eyes, like the new moon. Once they know they are safe and others care at this special place, peace washes over them. They begin to smile and get a glow in their eyes. Life is still, still hard, but things have turned right side up, Jennifer is fond of saying. All those years, Jennifer waited for God to remove her from her mess of a life. And all that time, Jennifer later realized, God was waiting for her. God loves me and love is the most powerful force to change the world, she says. Now she's a published author, a speaker, 
a volunteer coordinator, and a mentor to other survivors who have come after her, after her. And how does it feel? Light is inside of me now. I should not have survived, but the hand of God was on me. I am still standing, Jennifer says, and those left standing must dance. Jennifer shows us, like the moon, you do not have to be whole in order to shine. Not all of us have suffered in the way that Jennifer has, but we all have been broken by loss, by relationship, by illness, by violence, by mistakes and memories, also by the injustice and suffering and devastation we witness around us beyond our daily lives in the wider world. Ukraine, climate change, school to prison pipeline, COVID, eviction, addiction. But this, my dear, is the greatest challenge of being alive, to witness the injustice of this world and not allow it to consume our light. Another Facebook post the very same day as Jennifer's. Let us look at the moon, a waning crescent tonight, dear brothers and sisters, and know beyond a shadow of a doubt that we do not have to be whole, nor does the world in order for us to shine and for our light to shine brightly in this dark night of a world. Thanks be to God. Amen.